I have to be able to see for having me. They asked me what, what I want to talk about and what the topic should be and I was in China, in Beijing, in the midst of a conference and I was wondering what should I talk about to all of these bright, interesting, eclectic mix of students and I said globalization because I'm in Beijing talking to Zunera and Haider on WhatsApp and I'm going to talk to Pakistani students about globalization and tell them what I did in China and how China, Pakistan and the world are becoming more and more interconnected. And I think one of the uh, testaments to globalization is also that we have uh, Turkey uh, in TMUC and members from Tika who are also participating in this talk. So welcome to people from Tika here. We are all, just before I came, I looked at some of the students, some of you on your iPhones. Just the fact that you have a phone in your hand, which was assembled in China, designed in the Silicon Valley, and then sold in different areas, including Pakistan, is the biggest testament to where the world is headed today. We are all so interconnected, economically, digitally, socially, and strategically. Uh, uh, statement out of uh, Washington from Trump has ripple effects all over the world. It's, it makes headlines in Islamabad, it makes headlines in Delhi. Uh, a statement out of Beijing, a China-Pakistan economic corridor, <coughs> has discussions in Lahore, Karachi and Islamabad. So what is happening? What is happening in the 21st century, what a lot of people call the Asian century, with people being logged into Facebook, with people being friends across the globe, with our exchange programs, what is happening to the world? It's becoming smaller. It's becoming smaller and smaller and more and more interconnected and more and more interlinked. And when it becomes more and more interlinked, that means we all have to be more and more engaged. And that means that choices, the choice of people to engage with the other are becoming less of a choice but more a necessity. Whether it's the person sitting here on their seat, whether it's the businessman across the room who's also trading the same good as you, or whether it's the country right next door, you have to engage, you have to be uh, talking. You cannot have confrontation. You have to cooperate. This is what is happening today in the world. And we all know, I'm sure everyone here reads the newspaper in the morning, the US and China are having the biggest trade war in recent history. <coughs> they are uh, going for the jugular for each other's economies. They are banning access to Chinese companies in the US and vice versa. But at the same time of this historic trade war which is happening, in the world today. They continue to be the biggest trade partners that the world has seen in the past 30 years. So as there's the trade war happening, as there are these vicious statements coming from different capitals of the world who are siding with either one country or the other, they continue, the United States continues to be the biggest buyer of Chinese goods in the world, bigger than Pakistan, bigger than India, bigger than India and Pakistan combined, what does that show us? What does that mean? That means that the world and anyone who wants to survive, any country, any individual, any company, any entity has to engage proactively, has to engage aggressively and constructively, let alone the differences, putting the differences aside, you have to find that common ground with the other, with your counterpart, even though you don't like them, even though there might be a lot that distinguishes you from your counterpart, but you have to engage and you have to talk to them. And in Pakistan, I feel it's very important to understand what's happening. Because in Pakistan, 
we are very, uh, we generously label organizations and people and entities as this, that or the other. And ultimately what, what, what we are doing is we are isolating ourselves. And with the tremendous potential that Pakistan has, that we have, whether it's our students, whether it's our companies, whether it's our economy, we have to be engaged and interlinked. And we have to be talking to our neighbors. We have to be talking to everyone around us. We have to trade with every country in the world. We have, I remember there was a very interesting article on the cover of the Newsweek and it was, it's the economy stupid. It's not bombs, it's not missiles, it's not uh, uh, your uh, muscle power, it's not your submarines, it's the economy. And economy is based on globalization. And that leads me to my other point. What is the latest <coughs> manifestation of globalization in the world today? And that is what some of you might have heard of is the Belt and Road Initiative. How many of you have heard of the Belt and Road Initiative, the BII? Can you raise your hands? One, two. Okay. So about, about 10 people in the room have heard of the Belt and Road Initiative. Can anyone tell me what the Belt and Road Initiative is? Can anyone volunteer? Any one of the people who raised their hands, why don't you tell us what the Belt and Road Initiative is? <laughs> you can just speak loudly. Uh, the Belt and Road Initiative is uh, basically... Um, yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> It's meant to uh, actually facilitate multilateralism from China towards other countries. It's basically China providing services to other countries and the other countries uh, uh, providing okay. services okay. in return of that. Okay, I think so. It's yeah. basically a service um, exchange okay. between other countries. Okay. I think that's a that's a yeah that's a good attempt at explaining what the BRI is. So BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, is an initiative which was initiated by President Xi Jinping of China which envelops and encompasses 65 countries from Eastern Europe to Africa to the Middle East to South Asia, Southeast Asia and it is based on connectivity. It's based on ports and pipelines and corridors of cultures um, and uh, what, what we at the PCI call the CCC, Corridors, Culture and Connectivity. And what, what why why is it so important? Because it is connecting countries from across the world who have not even probably ever heard of each other through uh, economic arrangements, through uh, trade corridors, and through people-to-people -people contacts. And this is what the world is experiencing today. They are not talking about building walls. They talk about breaking walls. It's about breaking barriers. It's about learning other languages. When you, TMUC is one of the organizations which teaches Chinese, for example. That is about globalization. This is the age of engaging, of learning about the other. And the Belt and Road Initiative is, an, as you rightly said, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is the linchpin of the Belt and Road Belt and Road Initiative is about a greater South Asia where Afghanistan, Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Kazakhstan, Central Asia are all part of greater South Asia and that is happening right in our doorsteps. That's happening right in Pakistan and I'm almost up with time. So what, what, what does this mean for us sitting in this room? It means we have to scratch the surface. We have to step outside that comfort zone that we have. And when we think twice, should we go there? Should I talk to that person who doesn't look like me? Who has a different race than me? Who has a different language than me? Who has a different gender than me? And who has a different country than me? You scratch that service and you have that second thought, you say yes. And you go out and you connect and you engage. Because this is not a choice. Increasingly, it is a necessity.
Thank you very much.